Hello again. I'm doing a another live stream. How you go at this? Um, so I thought I'd show you something a bit different this time. So we've got here are the seven hero cards. You can only see six at the moment. Um, the, oh, there's the seventh down there. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd give you a look at this, and it looks like I'm going to have to do a bit of editing here to get these ready for um, printing. So that's something that I can start to show you about how I do that. At least if, it, if it's going to play nicely with me, it might not. Um, and it depends on yeah, how the... Oh, oh I might have actually grouped all this already. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Oh. So if I just find out pretty quickly if I move that around, if I grouped that or not. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it. Yes, I have. Lovely. Okay, so now that is a 6.35. Okay, so what I do is I make a table. Here and I need to make. Let's see, it needs to be a three by three table, and we need to make sure we don't have alternating row colors that are turned off. There we go. Okay, let's change all of these. So they don't interact. They have no text, no text wrap. None. And it's saying for each one of these. Sorry about this. Computer's going slow. It doesn't like streaming and recording at the same time. Funnily enough, um, but it's not just a my computer thing. That's a fairly frequent thing, apparently. But that's okay. It'll catch up. Okay. It's getting there. Quick. There we go. We have two. Three. So yeah, what I do is I make sure that they don't interact with the, the table. So when the table comes up behind it, then I'll have to adjust the table so it has the same size as these, except a little bit bigger. Um, to give it a bit of bleed on the edges. Um, which means that if it doesn't match up perfectly, it's still going to be okay. Um, and it just gives me a bit of space to make cutting out easier. Um, which is nice. Um, you know, it's always good to try and make things easier for yourself down the line. So the more you can do to make that happen, the better. So let's change that all to none. And then after that's finished doing that, the table should jump up to here. There we go. It has lovely. Okay. Now you. This table. Okay. You want. Three. Three. Get it next to me. Not extra, not less. There you go. Five foot. Oh. Let's 
thinking about it. No, no, it's... Oh, my mind just keeps going back and forward, doesn't it? Okay, let's leave that for a second and go over here and turn off the up and more color. Now, around column size, this is where it gets fun. So this, what size is this? Just need to match it up. Two of these. So it's 8.89 in height. Okay, so probably about nine centimeters in height. So it's going to nine. Yep, lovely. And then it's, it's, uh, it's, it is 6.35. Okay, so I need at least 6.35. Now let's, so let's go 6.5. Let's go 6.5, see what it does with that. Can't manage that. No, it goes 5.66. Okay, so that tells me that I need to, let's just shuffle you over. That I need to decrease the margins a little bit so that that will work for me. Okay, so let's get rid of header and footer. I'm gonna have pretty tiny margins here, it looks like. That's okay. Six point three three. Oh. And this is 6.35. Okay, this is going to be super tight. Super tight, and I don't know how much. Um, I don't have uh, how much the printers have in terms of um, how close to the edges they can print. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how that works. Um, I might end up needing to do that a little differently. Maybe only doing two, or maybe it means that I have to um, put these all sideways, like I have for this guy. Um, so I'll have to see what works best for that. And oh, let me fit. Oh, there. Go you. Put it there. I want three rows. And then we we'll want two tables of it. There we go. Okay. okay. So that's the document. And we'll need to decrease our margins for our top and bottom as well. So, I know this is so exciting, isn't it? Watch me changing margins. Uh, well, actually watching an empty screen at the moment because I've got just got the spinning wheel of doom. Though I don't think you can see that actually, you just see a normal cursor. You don't see when it changes for me. Um, but yes, at the moment I have a spinning wheel of doom, which is annoying. That's okay. Kind of scroll up so you can look at the more interesting ones. That's a bit annoying. Oh. Come on. Come on. No. Okay. Let's change over then. Set and we'll have a look over here. So this is what I was showing you last time, yesterday actually. Um, 
design and it'll come up. Or it might not because it's still pages. Who knows? So if I do that, will that help? There you go. Okay. But it's not going to scroll for me, is it? No, it's not. Done it. Okay. Finish up there, maybe. No, no, I'm finished up there. So I'll show you. Oh, oh you won't see that when we put them aside. Oh, I'll go back here, back to here, and change this to desktop, and then you'll be able to see that. Desktop, yes. So now you can see all of it. Yay. Okay. So this is something interesting that I found. This is something that I've I've been using just recently to help me figure out what numbers I should be putting on on the different encounters. So because in the first circulus, the first circle, as in like the first one that you encounter, so quarter circulus, when you start it. I'm assuming that you are either working with one or with two dice, is my assumption. So I think the highest number that I have for you to roll there is seven, um, which is, of course, impossible with one dice, but with, with two dice is actually quite easy. It's the most common number and whenever I put a number there it's that number or higher unless it's otherwise specified um, so it's not like you have to roll this specific number it's rather higher um, so in quarter circulus the numbers that I have the lowest is three and the highest is seven except for I think there's one where I specify that you're all lower instead of higher um, and that one has a couple of twos on it Whereas now in tertius circulus, the third circle or the second one that you come to, um, now I'm assuming that you always have two dice and often have three. So we're going often into the double digits. I've got some that are as high. I think I've got 13 as my highest number so far that I've used. Um, but it's quite possible that I could go up higher towards these numbers here. Um, but we'll see how we go with that, because um, I still need to have room to grow in terms of the second circle and then the first circle as well, because the most number of dice is four. You don't get to five, um, at least not with um, your normal skill level. So if you put your skill level all the way up to seven and not all of, not all of the heroes can get up to that seventh level, um, uh, you'll show you that if, yay, so it stopped, kind of. Um, so here you can see this guy can only get up to level four in power, and up to level six in agility, and up to level four in thought, but he can get up to level seven in septimus. Um, so it's only at level seven that you're actually able to get four dice. Now, there are various things in terms of items that you can get, um, particularly that will enable you to roll more dice or will enable you to have more re-rolls and that sort of thing. Um, but generally speaking, you're not going to be rolling more than four dice at any one time. So, which means that realistically the highest number that's ever going to be on an encounter would be 24. The chances are I'll cap it a little bit lower than that, probably 21 because it's flavorful because it's three times seven. Um, and seven is a bit of a running thing. Um, so, yes, um, I've been using this to get a bit of an idea of how difficult each, each different role will be. Um, so, this gives you um, the numbers for a specific role. So, this is how difficult it is to roll a four. This is how difficult it is to roll an eight rather than eight or higher.
but I can easily just add up the numbers. So if it's four or higher, I add up there, 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 or four or higher on two dice, it's that plus all those, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, or if it's four or lower, I'm going that the opposite direction, of course. Um, so you know it makes it, you know, it's obviously impossible on five dice to roll a four. Um, so which makes, yeah, makes it interesting. Um, so yes, do we have this one back yet? Uh, it's getting there. This is up now. Um, it's thinking about it. Okay, but I can show you here. So this is the back of the hero cards. So as you can see, there's one, two, four, five, six, seven different flames. So again, the idea of seven. Um, and here you get a little look at one of the hero cards. So each hero card, you've got the name of the Septimus that they're from. So this one is Untalia, um, which is the only invented name um, out of all of the different Septimuses. Septimuses isn't really a plural, it doesn't work. It could be Septimai, I think, or something like that. Um, but I try not to pluralize it just to avoid that issue. Um, so from each, each Septimus, their name is actually a real Latin name that I found, um, except for this one, Untalia, which I made up because there aren't really any Latin names starting with U that worked. Um, so you have the name, you have their, um, uh, their trait. So this one is stealth, and the trait is what you use um, when you're facing encounters, um, one of the ways you can defeat the encounter is if it has the same colour as your Septimus, you can use your trait to pass it for free, essentially. Um, that doesn't give you... Um, but that mean, I think that means you don't get an item, but you get a, um, a skill level boost in your Septimus skill. Um, so hence why you, you want to draw ones of your own color. Um, so yeah, name, trait, um, it has, shows you what your first, um, the abilities that you start off with. So Antalia is unique in that they have two abilities that they start off with because they're only one, the only, um, Septimus that has two, two, two skill levels in in their Septimus skill. Um, so for each skill level, they get a new ability or an upgraded ability. So they get Stealth, Cloak, and Halt Progress, uh, whereas each other one only gets one to start off with, which is kind of cool. And then there's a little bit of flavor text. Um, then there's the different um, skill levels that they have, and also their potential skill levels, so what they can get up to. Um, so for each, each Septimus, both of those are quite different. Um, but there are also similarities. So each Septimus only has seven points invested across the different skills. Uh, and in very different ways. So some of them are quite balanced, some are very unbalanced. Um, and so that lends itself to different play styles. That was the idea when creating them. Um, that each would be good for different personalities, different types of people to play, and each would would give you know be very interesting to play. You know, I want each one of these to be an interesting to play and enjoyable to play. That's not my phone. Hi, uh, sorry, I forgot to send a message. I don't have that phone. Um, so ah. I don't have ringtone. Um. So yeah, yeah, Antalia is unique in that they're the only ones that have two skill levels in Septimus. They're also the only ones apart from Seneca that can um, get to level seven cheese. in Septimus. Um, oh, um, actually, um, in Septimus skill. Yes, yeah, it's um, This is fairly, I think, fairly standard um, in the terms of the amount of... Yeah, uh, um, yes. Uh, like, 
the amount of boxes oh, no, that there are, that. So, yeah, yeah, potential amount yeah. that is there is fairly standard. Um, it's not exactly the same across each septimus. Like there's some that have less and a couple that yeah. have a bit more, yeah. um, but it stays within in, in a certain range. Yes. I think the average is close to 20, 21. No, no, I did um, oh, aren't you good? Total levels across the board. The um, but there is one that yeah. is very low that was, I think, only 16. Um, that's Ignatia because they super specialise. Um, and then there's one that is very high. Uh, that and they have 26. That's Seneca. Um, because they're the idea is that yeah, they're the, yeah. the philosophers yeah, and good. the wise men, and they've had a lot of yeah, yeah. time to be able to develop these skills. No, no, no. <laughs> I was just checking. I thought you probably meant mozzarella, but just thought yeah. I'd just check. It's like it keeps. Yep, oh, no, that's good. Be frozen completely, I believe. Um, it should be in the baking. That's not ideal. Oh, you know the aisle where they have all the um, long life milks and stuff oh. like that. And we're back. Okay. Oh, that's really not liking me. Okay, I'll just. Yeah, I'll just skip out of that so that doesn't happen again. Oh, okay. okay. So, yes, so that's um, a little bit of a look at some of that sort of stuff. Didn't really get to do anything there, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can actually yeah, show you good. on here. So I've been putting in. Oh, right. Um, so I've been putting in the new ones because I did uh -huh. the white. White set tertius yesterday. Okay. I'm um, going to do orange, at least orange today, hopefully grey as well, um, because there's only six, so I can get through them a bit quicker. Um, and also, okay. because I've done a lot already, I can do Thank it you. better. So, Bye. here I've got the name of each of them, I've got the circulus, I've got the colour, um, then different stats. So, power, agility, thought, septimus, whether it's a blocked space or not. So, I've said kind of um, for each colour, I want two that are going to be a blocked space, which means that you can't actually move through that space until you have completed that one, um, which is, of course, only relevant if you have more than one movement. Um, but there are cases where that's going to be, where that is going to happen. Um, so I have specific ones that will block your movement, as well as, you know, the walls that are going to do that as well. Um, and then the rules uh, for each one, and then notes on them. Um, some of them are quite simple like this, others are more complex, I think. Um, but mostly that's it. A couple of them like notes to self, like this one can theoretically be an infinite loop because they can't withdraw or retreat, they have to keep going until they finish it. Um, which theoretically could keep on going, but it's not very high, so I'd hope it wouldn't. <laughs> so, so these ones. Um, so the lowest number I've actually got here is seven, which is the highest number that I have at Quartus. So I don't know if that is the lowest number I'll have in any of them, but yeah, I find it interesting. Um, then I've only got one thirteen so far. Highest of the numbers I've got are 11, but I've got a fair few 10s spattered around. But you're going to be seeing a lot more Xs. Um, so there's only one, one standard now. Um, oh, category here. So a standard is when there's all three skills. I don't, not counting Septimus. Um, limited is when there is only two skills. And, um, both here and in quarters have two limited. Um, whereas here I also had two standard, but here I've just got one standard. Then restricted is when there's only one skill. Here I had one restricted. Here I've got two restricted. And then there's Septimus, where Septimus skill is um, used, but I always have a new max of three skills that are available. So it means that one of the others is cut out. Um, so yes, yeah, so a lot more X is happening here than there is up here, as you can tell. Um, question marks, yeah, they can be fun. Um, 
and then I'm, for the rules, I'm starting to um, put two different things together. So for example, this one here, power minus one for one turn and minus two roll result. Whereas previously, one of those by themselves would be a bad thing. Um, now I've got both together. So, um, plus three roll result. I'm doing these um, shorthand, so I'm not putting on two lines. I'm trying to keep it on each of these on one line. Um, yes. And I'm trying to keep a balance between, um, you know, ones that have a result for if you succeed, this happens, or if you fail, this happens. I'm trying to keep a balance between those two. Um, so here you can see a couple more. And this is the one I was talking about before, Ignatia, the way they really specialize. So <laughs> straight away, they have access to two dice and two rerolls. Um, they're the only ones that do that. Um, but as you can see, that comes at quite a cost in terms of that you know their highest that they can go in thought is two the highest they can go in agility is three the highest they can go in sentiments is four so that's that's quite quite significant um a cut back for that early win um and that early speed that they have um so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out um and how um, well, they can compete against against each other, Septimus. Um, you know, because they have, they're obviously very good early game, but you know, will they be able to compete in the late game? And Maximilianus over here is all about self improvement and keep on getting better and better and better. Um, so the scientists, um, obviously, better in thought. <laughs> Um, not so good at power and jelly, but still quite, still quite good. Um, they're actually fairly similar to NES, I believe, in terms of um, the skill levels. I think the only difference is, yeah, so I think NES has two, 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 one. So it's actually the upside down of this. Um, and they don't have that one there. I think that's the only difference. So they're actually quite similar um, in terms of how this looks. Oh no, they don't have that on or that one either. So this one has three more. Um, okay, starting. Yay. Okay. Um, um, Torrentious speed. Um, so they're the ones that have extra movement from the start. Uh, so they start off with two movement, whereas everyone else just has one and needs to get items and things to get extra movement. Um, so, they, of course, they start off with better agility. Um, and here's uh, Aeneas, which is kind of my favourite. They're the balance, ones that are really balanced and all about, um, as you can see, their preparation. So it's, it's very much about planning ahead and all this sort of thing. Um, so, you know, their speciality is that instead of just drawing, when they, when they trigger an encounter, instead of just turning the top card over, they actually draw the top two cards, look at them, and decide which one they want to face. So that's really powerful. Um, Petronia, the warriors. So always can have a warrior in there. It's obviously very strong in strength, though not as strong as these guys are. Um, and they can't get as strong as these guys are. Um, but they're slightly more balanced, as you can see. Um, they're still not very good on thought, but a lot more balanced than Ignatia is. And Seneca Wisdom, as you can see, um, very high in terms of their potential of where they can go. Um, and also quite balanced, um, like Aeneas is. Um, but still, um, not 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 as balanced, um, but um, very much you know part of their thing is you know combining the different um, things and using them together and all that sort of stuff. So that's that's quite interesting. Um, but yeah, that's that's a little look at the different 
different ones there. And I think I'll probably stop um, there now because I think I've probably been going for 20 minutes at least. Um, so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed having a little look at those um, and I will see you next time.